On May 4, 1998, the victim's mother, Carol Stites, testified about the day before her daughter was murdered. She testified that she had become depressed about the upcoming wedding between her daughter and Jimmy Fennell. At the trial, she blames herself and her nervous condition for the wedding anxiety. However, a closer look at police notes, witness statements, and Carol Stites' own handwritten journal entries indicate the relationship between Stites and Fennell was fraught with jealousy and suspicion, a key dynamic that was never conveyed to jurors at the original trial. The first evidence of conflict within the relationship is Stacy's co-worker, Alicia Slater. She said she really wasn't so excited to get married and quickly followed that with saying that she was actually sleeping with a black guy named Rodney and that she was, you know, not sure what her fiancé would do if he found out and she had to be pretty careful about it. And now we have a new statement from Carla Hall, who was married to David Hall, Jimmy Fennell's patrol partner on the Giddings Police Department at the time of the murder. Carla Hall was also a close friend of Stacy Stites and a neighbor that lived about 200 yards from the apartment that Jimmy Fennell and Stacy Stites shared. Additionally, she spent the evening before the murder with Stacy, and besides Carol Stites and Jimmy Fennell, was one of the last people to see the victim alive. Stacy and I had several conversations. She was always at the house. They lived next door to us. There is one conversation that does stick in my head, which I thought was strange. She was sitting on the armrest of my recliner, and she was sitting there leaning up against the back of it. And she just kind of made an awful wall comment about, you know, I have a friend, I met a friend, and if Jimmy ever found out, he would kill me. And that's where the conversation ended because the men folk came inside the house and she didn't want to discuss it anymore. I never got a chance to question her about it. I just thought that if she wanted me to know more, she would tell me more. Do you remember when that conversation occurred? I want to say a week or two before. I don't recall the exact date. Shockingly, Carla Hall was never called to testify at Rodney Reed's original trial, and now Carla Hall claims she was never even interviewed by investigators following Stacy's death. I know I didn't talk to any law enforcement officers about it. They never came and questioned me. They never, <clears throat> never once brought it up at all. You don't recall any sort of interviews with any investigators? I had no interviews with any investigators at all. Do you think you would have testified at the, t at the time that Stacy made that comment to you prior to her death, if you would have been called to trial? I would have brought it up and mentioned it had they either brought me to trial or at least came in and interviewed me about the day before and the events leading up. But Carla Hall was not called to testify at the trial. And once again, key witness testimony was kept from jurors who were deciding Rodney Reed's guilt or innocence. However, recovered police notes from the investigation back up Carla's account, indicating trouble within Stacy Stites and Jimmy Fennell's relationship. Saturday, April 20th, two days before the murder, police notes indicate Carol told them there was a fight over the details of the wedding. Carol's journal indicates the following night on April 21st, Fennell's rude behavior upset her and she became depressed about the upcoming wedding. On the night of the murder, on April 22nd, Carol Stites wrote that Fennell's behavior again upset her to the point where she questioned whether Stacy should consider backing out of the wedding before it was too late. To which Stacy ominously replied, you don't know what stress is. Finally, soon after the murder on April 23rd, another uncovered police note indicates Carol Stites told investigators Fennell and her daughter argued the night before the homicide and pointed out that Fennell was jealous of everyone. Who Fennell may have been jealous of is unclear, but the candidates are many. First, there was Greg Corner, 
the father of the daughter Stacy had when she was 15 years old and put up for adoption. Police reports indicate that Stacy Stites had stayed in contact with Greg Corner up until the time of her death. Another potential target of Fennell's jealousy could have been Jerry Ormond, a married man who was carrying out an affair with Stacy around the time she met Fennell. In fact, Fennell fingered Jerry Ormond as a suspect to investigators and also pointed suspicion at former boyfriends John Kirby and Jeremiah Smith. Yet another boyfriend who may have concerned Fennell was John Lestovica, who had enlisted in the military, was stationed in California, but according to Stacy Stites co-worker, had planned to come back to visit her, unbeknownst to Fennell. Two other former boyfriends of the victim listed in police reports include Robert Campion and Marshall Farrell. Still, another object of Fennell's jealousy could have been Glenn Wright Jr. Glenn Wright's mother, Margaret Wright, called investigators months after the murder and told them her son had been seeing Stacy Stites in the weeks leading up to the murder and feared the relationship had been discovered by Fennell. Margaret Wright, at first, refuses to provide her or her son's name for fear of what might happen. No, I can't give it to you. Why? Because I think he'd be railroaded. You've got a cop and you've got somebody else. No, nobody's going to be railroaded. I can promise you that. Let me say this. For the longest time, we've had our suspicions, okay? Glenn Wright Jr. and all of Stacy Stites other former boyfriends were investigated and cleared. And then you have Rodney Reed, who has 20 different people that have come forward to verify his relationship with Stacy Stites and one witness who confirms Fennell had suspicions and actually confronted Rodney Reed and his cousin about it. Two weeks before uh, Stacy Stites' murder, me and Rodney, we were walking down Hill Street. This car, he just come flying up. Then he just came to a stop. He told Rodney, he called that Rodney's name three times. Hey, Rodney, I know it's you, Rodney. But he got out of the car, Fennell got out of the car. The passenger, I don't know who he was. He, he was sitting there quiet and stuff by the car. And Fennell came over there, started telling Rodney, uh, he know that about him and Stacy and so forth, so forth. At first, I thought he was gonna shoot Rodney. You know, the way he got up out of the car. But it wasn't like that. You know, it was just having words. But he told Rodney, what made me mad and hurt me, he told Rodney, you gonna pay. So I, we thought, we took it as a threat. Chris Aldridge, who was also Rodney Reed's alibi on the night of the murder, was never called to testify at the original trial. Instead, Fennell, under oath at trial, claimed he and Stacy had no ongoing conflicts at the time of her murder, a statement we now know is verifiably untrue. Yet this false narrative has been perpetuated by Stacy Stites half sister Deborah Oliver in interviews with the local press. They were very happy together. They were looking forward to getting married. Um, and never have we thought that Jimmy was guilty of murdering my sister ever. Yet recently, uncovered handwritten notes attributed to Stacy Stites sister indicate the family had deep suspicions of Fennell after the murder, including questioning his demeanor and behavior at the funeral noting that he was acting paranoid after the murder and wondering why he refused to return phone calls from a private investigator the family had hired to look into the case. Yet, during his trial testimony, Fennell claimed he did not recall the private investigator ever trying to get in touch with him, a claim we now know to be another lie. Such information would have been vital evidence for a jury to hear before sentencing another man to die for Stacy Stites' murder, but they didn't. 
Instead, jurors were left with the impression that the relationship and upcoming wedding were trouble-free, which we now know to be completely untrue. So why would Stacy Stites stay committed to marrying Jimmy Finnell despite her fears? A clue may lie in a recently recovered police note from an interview with the victim's friend, Jeremiah Smith, a former boyfriend who had visited with Stites a couple weeks before her death. According to police notes, Stites confided in Smith that she had suffered a miscarriage in late February or early March of 1996, about two months after she moved in with Fennell and a month and a half before she was killed. Nowhere else in police notes or trial testimony is Stacy Stites pregnancy mentioned again, a confusing omission over such a pertinent detail. Did Stacy Stites become pregnant, and did that precipitate the decision for Stites and Fennell to marry so suddenly? And if she was pregnant, was Stites sure of the identity of the father? And could this question have been the cause of increased tension between her and Jimmy Fennell? And still, yet another critical piece of evidence has emerged that was not available for jurors to see. In a letter dated July 25th, 2019, sent to the presiding judge in Rodney Reed's case, a longtime local insurance agent whose identity we are protecting per her request claims she sold Stacy Stites a life insurance policy soon before her murder. The agent writes, when Stites questioned the necessity of the policy, given her young age, Fennell responded with the agent present, if I ever catch you messing around on me, I will kill you, and no one will ever know it was me that killed you. A stunning exchange the agent remembers clearly to this day. Confirmation as to whether the policy was actually purchased and whether or not Jimmy Fennell was the beneficiary of this policy is still to be determined. CC'd on this letter was Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, current Texas Governor Greg Abbott, current Bastrop District Attorney Brian Gertz, and presiding judge Doug Shaver. With this information in hand, officials chose to move forward with Rodney Reed's execution date, unmoved by such potentially exonerating evidence. And finally, just days ago, on October 3, 2019, another key witness has come forward with damning evidence of Fennell's guilt. Former Lee County Sheriff's Deputy Jim Clampett has now signed a sworn affidavit that states, while attending Stacy Stites' funeral back in 1996, he heard Fennell say to Stacy Stites' dead body, you got what you deserved. It shocked him at the time, and it has bothered him ever since. Clampett states he finally came forward with this information because if he didn't, he would not be able to live with himself. Cryptically, Clampett suggests officials inquire with former Lee County Deputy and current Lee County Sheriff Rodney Meyer and former Texas Ranger and lead investigator on the case Rocky Wardlow for more information. The investigation continues as the execution date nears.